So first things first, May, before we jump into this, when I first started to, to hear about AI writing tools and see ads, I'll speak for myself, I kind of got a little scared. I was like, is this thing coming for me? Is this going to replace me? Is it going to write better than me? Like, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I do think the ads were scary um, and uh, no one uh, wants to be writing a blog post on their phone. Uh, and so like V1 of any technology, um, I think that is really trans disruptive and transformational um, does have that impact. And I think the um, the education um, uh, imperative really is on, you know, the folks who are developing the applications. And, and for us, the big thing we tell people who are excited about it and like see the, the benefits is like, it can't feel like magic to your teams. You must be the evangelist for what pre-trained generative models are actually doing uh, when they create the scarce really good text. And when we can demystify that for people and for marketers, like A, they really understand that, you know, there's, they're not going anywhere. And, and two, they really understand that like in the hands of content and writing experts, like this is truly transformational. In the hands of folks who aren't good writers to begin with or good content strategists to begin with, it's garbage in, garbage out. So I'll speak for myself and our team at Metadata, but one of the big bottlenecks that we run into is we don't really have a dedicated editor or we don't have like somebody who's a rover, if you will, who can constantly be editing and reviewing and tweaking copy. Usually that falls on me and I have enough of my plate already. So outside of that, what are some of the big bottlenecks that you see working with B2B marketing uh, and content teams? Totally. Every single part of a demand gen's growth engine needs content, like from ads to landing pages, to the offer, to the email follow-up, to the nurture, and like our ideas and what we want to do. And, and frankly, like in the macro, like what we're being asked to do is like this exponential type of um, thing. And then content like feels super analog, you know, like we're eking out like one piece at a time. Um, and so, you know, like... It is a um, a huge bottleneck. You know, I have seen demand gen teams like spin up their own eBooks and like, that's great if you actually have a writer on the team, but like, if you just need a PDF download, like, please don't do that. Um, and so the, the bottlenecks that we're really trying to address is how do you take like the marks on your team, the people who know the brand voice, who know like what the audience wants to hear, um, who've internalized, you know, the writing style and actually like, give those Legos away, make that accessible to everybody. And what's great about AI and writing and editing is sometimes AI is taking the lead. And so we're helping you take like, you know, one or two bullets and like drafting a webinar um, brief, uh, or we are, you are taking the lead and AI is supporting. You've actually already written that case study or thought leadership piece, and we're helping you cut it up or repurpose it or editing to make sure you're using the right terminology for the audience. So, you know, you want it to be something that's accelerating the team members that you've got already um, and really programmed and really like customized to addressing like your team specific bottlenecks. So that's, that's really the next gen of um, AI writing and editing. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier, I kind of feel like a scary, unfamiliar world to content teams. So what's like the, the best first step that you recommend these teams take when trying to, you know, bring on AI writing tools? Yeah, totally. Um, I think it is really understanding um, what could, like starting within, what could really help us accelerate um, uh, what we're doing right now. For some customers, it is, gosh, like we actually produce amazing content. Can we really set up life cycle um, as a channel? Uh, for others, it is like sales never uses our shit. Like how can we actually address that? How can we- oh, Please stay on your soapbox because you just, okay. you are speaking right to me right now. So keep yeah. going. <laughs> um, it's like for every team, it actually means something different. Um, and then it is like with that in mind, then go take a look at the tooling that's out there um, and try to figure out like what could help you if you really did open up that channel, right? Get like 60 or 70% of the way there. Um, for folks who like have really done that and then they're using Writer to like train custom models, like they're getting 80, 90% of the way there. So, you know, on taking things that you've written and repurposing them, um, taking things that you've written and automatically automatically generating a newsletter. So it is, it is really exciting, but it definitely starts with folks who are like 
part editorial leaders, part data scientists, part like scaling strategist, and really putting on that hat of like, how can I make content the growth engine of everything the team is doing? Because like, if we're sort of like sitting here siloed, like eking out like one thing um, uh, after another, but like in this super analog way, and then just expecting DG or growth to like run with it, that's not really a recipe for content driving business results. So what do you think is, is standing in the way of more broad adoption of tools like this within B2B teams and organizations? Frankly, I think that's a good question. I think um, experimenting with tools where like the juice is worth the squeeze. So, you know, definitely like go to writer, um, sign up for um, a trial, check it out. Um, you know, and I, I do think there'll be uh, a ton of um, new kind of next gen uh, purpose built tools um, that really um, uh, allow marketers to like actually uh, benefit from what uh what's going on i think if like your esl or the content doesn't actually matter or like you really need something one step above lorem ipsum like the first gen tools are okay but most marketers and most folks probably listening to this like have experimented and been like okay not good enough um i think you know the the thing that we need to really get to mass adoption is people really understanding um that it is good enough and you know customers like HubSpot and Dialpad and Accenture and like some really amazing um, customers are now like adopting this technology um, and speeding up editing and ideation and drafting processes with AI. Um, and, uh, you know, they've, they've seen they've seen the benefits and um, that the quality is there now. So we are not a customer yet at Metadata, but I'm very interested in Writer and I've, I've taken some demos before. So when you're talking with marketing teams, can you share anything about like the types of questions that they're asking, what they're interested in, you know, any objections that they have? I just want others to see how other marketers are thinking about this. Yeah, totally. Um, I think on uh, on the the marketing side, the the hesitation and like the questions tend to be like around two main topics. One is like what happens to my SEO, um, and we actually just put out um, a piece on this um, yesterday. Uh, we've we've published a GPT uh, detection tool on our site. Um, so like the the big education piece is what does actually helpful content look like in terms of the information density. Um, and our, our goal is to help customers get there faster using writer tools, but they have to get there if they're trying to rank. Whether you're, you know, using AI in your process or it's a 100% human research and drafting process, like you've got to have um, that um, information density and, and general like authoritativeness of the site uh, in order to get stuff to rank. And then the second big thing um, that folks tend to tend to ask is like, how much data do I need? Um, and so, you know, they love hearing the customer stories of like people using our API. API to like republish 4,200 web pages, like optimized for SEO, you know, it's like really amazing stuff, but like, Hey, I actually don't like anything um, on my blog or like I've hated all of the ads that like growth has been running. Um, and so like how much content do I actually need? And so like those are really fun conversations when folks like get into that mindset because, um, you know, we can help them like develop that data set. It can be an iterative process. They can give us some and then develop some with writer and publish it. And then like we can retrain. Um, so those really tend to be like with with the um uh, innovative marketers, kind of what the what the conversations tend to be about. Now, before we jump into how this all works in a, a quick step by step process, you mentioned a few companies a few moments ago. Can you share more on what those companies are are doing and how they're using Writer that that gets as much value as they're getting out of it? Yeah, totally. When you think about all of the writing um, that happens in a funnel, right? everything from your product pages to like your onboarding flow to like in, in a PLG business to like the thought leadership that you're doing, everything in blog and editorial, the stuff you're doing very top of funnel, like every marketing leader we have talked to in the last couple of months has said something along the lines of, I need to cut paid spend by like X crazy amount, um, which means, you know, a ton more organic, uh, organic content. And so like, 
that whole journey um, is content that we that we really can can help with, and um, we start where there's the most need and pain, um, and then as folks kind of like adopt and see um, the benefit and kind of get how it works and how training works, um, then you see like demand gen come in for Facebook ads and like someone else come in for case studies, someone else come in for outbound email, um, and so that's nice because like the brand and the brand language already lives in Writer, and so everything from your taxonomy to your messaging is there um, and can really help benefit kind of the the rest of the team. So um, I know you guys are B2B marketing OS, which I absolutely love. You know, the, the analogy with writers, think of us as like the content desk, you know, and like the folks who really get that. strategic um, are there to empower all of the growth initiatives with, I wouldn't say on-demand content, you know, there's like quite a bit of work that you do to like make sure it's really, really good and strategic and the, the models are trained. Um, and then of course, folks need to edit it, but it really is like so much faster. Um, then, you know, outsourcing to an agency. We love agencies, of course, you know, they're, they're big supporters. Um, my kid just woke up. Uh, but um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm a nerd. I have no shame in admitting it. Let's nerd out a little bit. Let's see how this all works. Okay. Sounds good. Let us share screen. Okay, cool. Um, so this is Writer. Um, this is our dashboard. And if you go in Docs and uh, you click Start with with CoWrite, um, there are a host of templates um, that are custom to uh, what a business is doing, what it needs the most, from you know headline generation to uh, email drafting um, to advertising. Uh, and so with um, Adormi specifically, um, let's go into, let's actually, um, let's do ads, search ads, here we go. Um, uh, they've trained a number of parts of um, uh, their their growth practice. And I love using e-commerce brands as examples because so many of us aspire to that type of like velocity and creativity and like authenticity, I, you know? That's where I get all my good ideas from. Yep. Yeah, yeah, totally. We, we see that a lot. Um, and, you know, because it is a very much a volume-based business, like there's really, really good data. Um, and so in, in these folks' case, um, you know, they had like really good um, data on push notifications like by open rate. They had wonderful data on ads that they had run um, for, for search, for Facebook, et cetera. Um, and so we use all of the data um, that they're able to, to provide to basically build custom built models. And everything here on the left, this is WYSIWYG. So you can decide like how much input do I actually need to get from my user, my growth person, my performance marketer, my copywriter, um, um, and then what do I actually want to give them as as the output? And so in these folks' cases, you know, they want to be able to start with, in, in this particular template, um, a, a headline um, and then be able to actually get um, uh, uh, the, the description. So we're going to add, you know, a headline one. Um, and then let's go to, uh, let's try, um, <laughs> let's try this one. To give you a sense of you know what um, what comes out, um, and so they're able to get from the starting headlines um, a number of options, right? That expand on um, uh, the the headlines, give a couple of descriptions um, that they can use in in the advertisements, um, and this is all available via API too. And so, like, once people are using the UI to actually, like, interact with the model and, like, really get comfortable with, like, the tone and the brand and, like, um, the, the voice that comes through the ads, then they're like, okay, amazing. Like, let us switch this on. Um, and so, you know, it is, it's exciting to really feel like, um, you know, you're using years of uh, writing that copywriters did that was like very painstaking to basically like train up an engine that can then serve back a lot of that creativity. Um, and what's amazing is we can actually like rank and weigh in the model um, the ads that uh, performed better. Uh, and so, you know, most folks when they're um, trying to adopt AI into copywriting processes will be happy with just like maintaining the click through rates. But we are really seeing actually like deltas um, because of the fact that we're training on and weighing differently the push notifications, the ads that we know had better click-through rates and engagement rates. 
So Amazing. it's pretty exciting. Yeah. So uh, I wish I had this when I was a, a team of two at Metadata when I first started, but there's a whole lot more that we haven't been able to get to, but where can people find more information about Writer outside of going to the website? Yeah. Um, well, say hello. Hello at Writer. Um, we're pretty active on LinkedIn as well. Um, and the, the whole company is like so, so close to all of our customers. The customers are uh, very tight as a group too. So, you know, the best way is really to um, engage with uh, somebody who has used Writer, um, you know, to boost their blog, to speed up um, uh, their, their copywriting processes to like power demand gen, um, mm -hmm. to create that content desk. Uh, so you were very happy to put folks in touch with the, you know, customers that look most, most closely to where they are, um, from a graphically and then also from a, you know, maturity and life cycle perspective. Amazing. May, this was awesome. I wish we had more time because I'm a nerd and I love looking at this stuff, but <laughs> thanks, thanks so much for letting me agree with question. Awesome. Thanks so much.